of having my black eye, baby. Hehe. <laughs> okay, so I actually am like taking a Jung test from Carl Jung. It's Carl Young, but I like to say Jung because it's how it's spelled. It just makes sense in my brain. So I have to take this test, and it's for a job thing, but I thought I would sit down with you guys and take it along with you guys just for more entertainment for both of us. So let me just set you down right here and turn up the volume in this bus right now so that it is astronomical. Hold on, wait. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to take this test with you guys. Let me just position myself because, as you know... I did not plan for this. That did, literally did not do anything. <laughs> I like switched on a light and like <laughs> the dog outside barked. Like nothing happened. Okay, hold on. Oh, my phone. I like threw my phone on the bed. Hold on. I like do that because I don't want, like I get so, I just throw my phone, dude. I just get so done with my phone sometimes. I'm like, okay. But it's always on like a bed, obviously, or, like a soft surface. Let me just, is that fine? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Okay, let's get into this. Oh, oof, I accidentally just kind of like almost touched my black eye. <gasps> why did that kind of hurt? I don't know why that kind of hurt. Hurted. Hurted. <laughs> Hurted. Wow, I've only been out of school for like a month or like two weeks, honestly. <laughs> Hurted. I've been on TikTok too much. Follow my TikTok. <laughs> it's called A Girl with a Camera, just like my YouTube, my YouTube username. Okay, so I'm going to take this test with you guys. I actually have already taken most of it. I'm on number 47, and there are like only 60 questions, but I'm just going to I'm just gonna finish the rest with you guys, and then we'll go over it. Okay, number 47. You have good control over your desires and temptations. Yes, I can definitely. I can go without, like, anything. I can go without anything. I've, like, renounced so many things in my life, okay? So many things. That's a whole other video. But if you know me, and if you've been following my Instagram, then you know what I've renounced. I've renounced a bunch of stuff. So, yeah. And it also says, like... Okay, we're not gonna go to my chart and stuff like that. But, like, basically, I had my chart read. <laughs> and basically, in my chart, it says that I can renounce things. So... I was like, dude, that just confirms it. So, you have a good control over your desires and temptations. I would say, yes. But, like, soft yes, not, like, hard yes. Because it's, like, one, two, three, four, five. So, I would do the yes, the second to the last one. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Um, 48. You easily understand new theoretical principles. Yeah. Because I'm smart. No. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I do, though. Just because, like, I like theoretical principles. So if I like it, I'll do my best to understand it. 49. You usually place yourself nearer to the side than in the center of the room. Yes, that's a hard yes. I do. I like the side. Because I can observe everything. It's like I'm next to the wall. So like, I can observe the whole room from my vantage point of being against the wall. Because why would I want to observe the wall? Unless I was thinking of observing the wall. But usually I like to observe people rather than walls. <laughs> They just tend to be more interesting. But walls are fine, too. I mean, we're not discriminatory over here. <laughs> we don't discriminate over here. Okay, 50. When solving a problem, you would rather follow a familiar approach than seek a new one. I like both. I want to be able to, like, follow both. Um, familiar approaches are, like, cool, but, like, if it's not being solved, if the problem is not being solved from a familiar approach, then we have to take a new approach, you know what I mean? Like, I was fixing my tire with some friends, and it wasn't fixing, and so we had to, like, take a new approach for it, you know? So, in some situations, you, like, have to do, like, if not A, then B, like, you have to take a new approach. So, I would say, uncertain, I would do the middle button. A thirst for adventure is something close to your heart. Yes! Yes, but like, how much adventure are we talking? Because like, I have a plan for my life, okay? Um, I do, I really do. But like, at the same time, that plan involves adventure. So like, the adventure has to be within the plan. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> so, a this for adventure is something close to your heart. Um, middle button. Oh my gosh, now I'm overthinking these questions because I'm filming it. Um, I would say yes, we're just going to put soft yes, okay, not hard yes. When considering a situation, you pay more attention to the current situation and less to a possible sequence of events, no. Well, no, you always want to pay attention to like what could potentially happen, you know. So, well, but what do I do though? Because that's the ideal thing to do, but what do I do? I think I... Do you hear the birds? I love hearing birds chirp. It's just a thing for me. I think I 
pay attention. No, I pay attention to possible sequence of events. But so, that's a soft no. 53. When solving a problem, you consider the rational approach to be the best. Yes. Of course. Do you guys see my black eye? If you can't see it, it's right there, but you can see it. <laughs> so, I consider the rational approach to be not the best. The right approach is the best approach. Whether it's emotional or rational, but if it's the right approach, then it's the best approach. So depending on the situation, it really depends on the situation. However, I would say rationality trumps emotionality just because like it do be you know <laughs> it really do be so <laughs> so we're gonna put no we're gonna put a soft no we're gonna put a yes but we're gonna put a soft yes there we go okay 54 you find it difficult to talk about your feelings no i've cried in youtube videos before so soft no no i'm okay i can talk about my feelings i'm a talker anyway <laughs> i talk a lot so 55. Your decisions are based more on the feeling of a moment than on thorough planning. Oh no, I'm running out of time. Ugh. Sorry, this happens a lot in my videos too. I guess I'll just wait for it to die. No, I'm going to end it myself. I like having control. Okay, hello. So, I'm back. Um, I think that's better if it's zoomed in, right? I don't know. I still have yet to figure this shiz out, baby. <laughs> your decisions are based more on the feeling of a moment than on the thorough planning. Yes and no. This one's a middle one. This is a middle one. You know, because the moment influences the future. It's really important, so this is a middle one. 56. You prefer to spend your leisure time alone or relaxing in a tranquil atmosphere? Yes, but... Okay, this is, like, kind of embarrassing. I don't even know if I should, like, talk about this. Um, so, I can relax. I know how to relax. I have a good time when I do relax. However, if I'm just relaxing... It has to be productive relaxing, you know? Um, I can't just relax. I'll, I'll go crazy. Like, for me, meditating, like, mantra meditation, the stuff I do, japa, everything like that, that's productive relaxation. So, like, that's cool. But if I'm just, like, laying there in the grass, like, I don't know. I could. If I allotted, like, a specific amount. Okay, if I penciled it in my, like, calendar, I'd be able to. But it would have to be for a specific amount of time. I could just, like, lay there because then, like, I could be there forever, like, <laughs> what if I never get up, like, I have to actually plan it out, no, I will, I will get up immediately, probably, like, if you didn't give me an amount of time to be laying out there in the park on the grass looking at the sky, I would probably just, like, get up and be like, yo, can I do something productive, I don't know why, probably my environment probably influenced me to be this way, um, it has to have balance, like, that's not the most healthy mindset, so I'm working on it, um, I am working on it, yes. I am working on it. And also, relaxing to me is not, like, being on Instagram. Like, that's not relaxing. That is truly wasting time. That is, like, the actual definition of time wasting. And I'm talking about, like, scrolling through Instagram and whatnot, right? So, like, if I could just, like, figure out a way to, like, really relax in a productive way, like the way that I do in the morning with Java and stuff, then that's cool, you know? So, okay. So, no. Um, I cannot do that. <laughs> that's my answer. I cannot be doing that. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say... No. No, that's really harsh. <laughs> I'm gonna say... No, I don't. I'm gonna say no. I'm sorry. That's my truth. I really cannot do that. I, like, even, like, looking at that phrase, like, relaxing the tranquil atmosphere, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I can't. I'm sorry. It's a thing. It's a mindset thing. I'm working on it. That's why I'm moving to, like, an island or something, honestly. 57. You feel more comfortable sticking to conventional ways. Um conventional ways huh no I, I don't like conventional I like to challenge the conventionality I like to challenge the status quo um so no I don't I don't feel it's not about comfort it's about like again the right thing to do so no it's my answer soft no 58 you're easily affected by strong emotions yes yes <laughs> like, no question no anything yes that is a hard yes it's like the biggest yes 59, you're always looking for opportunities. Yes, we are, baby. That's a TikTok dance. Please follow me. Um, they're going to delete TikTok in the United States. I'm really excited. I hope they do because, well, no. I don't hope they do because a lot of people, a lot of creators, it's a cool platform. We have to talk about this. It's a really cool platform to, like, produce content that is, like, of value. But, like, for all the, like, little, I don't know, teenage people that are, like, really doing things on there that are, like, nonsense, like... 
you know, I don't know, consider switching, you know? Like, anyone can create amazing content. Um, it's just about the intention. So, no, I don't think TikTok should be cancelled, but should it be actually cancelled? Like, if it is cancelled, like, good riddance, I don't know, you know, like, <laughs> like follow my Instagram, like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> You're always looking for opportunities. Yes, that is a hard yes. Big fact, baby. 60. As a rule, current preoccupation, current preoccupations, <laughs> seem to slow down, <laughs> worry you more than your future plans. As a rule, current preoccupations, I don't get worried. Oh, I do get worried. Um, yes. Yeah, I'd say current, current, doobie. <laughs> doobie. 61. It's easy for you to communicate in social situations. Mm, it depends. Probably not. It's easy for me one-on-one, -on -one, but like not in a group. I don't know, baby. Like group situations, like, I don't know. It's okay if I'm like the center of like, like if I have the microphone. No, even, no, that's so much pressure. Actually, I changed my mind. Um, no, it's not easy. It's not. I don't think so. I've actually kind of struggled with that, to be honest. So I'm going to be, I'm going to put a soft no on that. 62. You rarely deviate from your habits. That's like right in the middle because I have deviated from them before, but at the same time it's not as common as I would like it to be, you know? Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to put a soft no because I have changed my habits before. <laughs> so I'm going to put a soft no, okay. 63. You willingly involve yourself in matters which engage your sympathies. Sympathies? No. That's not something I do. Out of self-protection, I don't do that. I did, I used to do that. I used to engage myself in matters which involved my sympathies and I used to feel really like compassionate and sad and, and just weighed down, um, like down. Oh my gosh, my camera's out of time again. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, we have six minutes. I don't think I'm gonna finish by then <laughs> cause I'd be talking so much. <laughs> Um, so do I willingly involve myself in situations which require my sympathy? Not willingly, however, if I were to display my sympathy, it would be authentic. Um, if I were in that kind of situation. So I don't willingly do that. That's like a lot of strain on my nervous system. I'm not doing that. Um, so soft note. And then 64, last but not least, this is the last question. You easily perceive various ways in which events could develop. Yes, I see all sides and angles. Actually, there are no angles because everything exists in a geometrical pattern of a sphere, probability-wise. So, <laughs> I see all sides, I guess, of the sphere. Like, oh, I see the sphere, you know, and I turn it like a globe. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can see like all, situ all sides of the situation. So it's a hard yes. And then now we're going to click score it and we're going to see what my score is. This is the first time I'm taking the Carl Jung Young test. I like to say, I already explained this, right? I like to say Jung. Oh, wow. Oh my god, I have to call the twins. Oh my god, should I call them right now? Oh my god, I will call them right now. And I'll be like, hey. Extrovert, intuitive... Okay, so I'm ENFJ, by the way. So I didn't say that already. <laughs> so I'm extrovert, intuitive, feeling, and judging. I thought I was ENFP. Tori Rosie, if you guys are watching this. <laughs> I thought I was ENFP. I'm gonna text them right now. Hold on, let me actually just text them. Um... So I took the Jung, Jung, so I took the Young test again, um, and it turns out I am E-N-F-J, J. Is that correct? They know, I swear, they know more about me than, like, the twins know more about me and this test than I do <laughs> about me and this test. So, uh... They're gonna freak out. I bet they're gonna be like, what? Because we took the test before and they were convinced I'm an ENFP and it came back as ENFP. So they were like freaking out because they were correct. Now I guess it's ENFJ. So I think I have grown <laughs> and matured and developed. Yeah, okay, let's like read the description because I don't know anything about this. So, um, extrovert, intuitive, feeling, and judging. Um,. Okay, come on. Which one should we click on? There's so much. Okay, ENFJ type description. Read full description. ENFJs are the benevolent pedagogues of humanity. Oof, really? <laughs> 
They have tremendous charisma by which many are drawn into their nurturing tutelage. Bro, these are some large vocabularies. Tutelage and or grand schemes. Schemes? <laughs> schemes. <laughs> My YouTube channel is a scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Many ENFJs have tremendous power to manipulate others. <laughs> what? Maybe no. Stop. <laughs> With their phenomenal interpersonal skills and unique salesmanship. But it's usually not meant as manipulation. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I promise. I promise it's not. ENFJs generally believe in their dreams and see themselves as helpers and enablers, which they usually are. I do. I do. Yes, I do feel that way. Um especially in social situations, everything. ENFJs are global learners. They see the big picture. The ENFJ's focus is expansive. Some can juggle an amazing number of responsibilities or projects. Projects. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> this is coffee in my cup, you guys. <laughs> like, I'm in my solo cup. <laughs> in my party, so I'm tired, okay? Can you see? <laughs> it's like caramel, okay. Caramel. That's the right way to say that word, by the way. It's not caramel. Caramel. Just saying. <laughs> Many ENFJs have tremendous entrepre entrepreneurial ability. Back there, find his head, thick as Oh my god, that's my baby. <laughs> ENFJs are by definition J's. Wait, what? <laughs> ENFJs are organized in the arena of interpersonal affairs. Their offices may or may not be cluttered. Mine, no, I don't do clutter at all, baby. You wouldn't catch me dead, baby, okay? Um, but their conclusions reach their feelings about people and their motives are drawn much more quickly and more res and are more resilient. Okay, basically, I'm very smart, okay? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> with a good personality. That's what I gathered from this. Oh, okay, trademark, the first shall be the last. This refers to the open door policy of the ENFJs. What am I? A history timeline? <laughs> One ENFJ colleague always welcomes me into his office regardless of his own circumstances. Yeah, I do be like that. I'm like, oh, like I'm so welcoming. Like I'll have a billion things to do and I'll be like, oh my gosh, like, and I'll engage you in conversation or like, hey, do you want to like, and I'll have like a billion things sitting on, like I really do be getting myself in trouble, <laughs> like a lot. I have his, his undivided attention. Yeah, I do be giving my attention to people like a billion percent, like undividedly. Okay, my camera's gonna die. I have to go. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a like, subscribe to this channel, follow me on social media down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you and thank you for being here till the very end. Peace. Wow, dude, I deserve, I deserve an Emmy, baby. That was trill. That was really lit. <laughs> Bye.